the Singularity University is not a traditional university. Um, we do not uh, grant degrees. That's not what we're trying to do. Um, and many people have asked me, why are we called a university then? And, and I, I thought about that for some time. And, and I actually think that we look like what the future of the university will look like. I believe today the degree, the concept of the degree, is changing radically. In fact, I think the degree is being eroded and needs to erode be, because it's focused on this single point or the single accomplishment. And today, the most important aspect of education is continuous learning. We have to be building adaptability to be resilient long term. That starts from age two and needs to extend to age 102. We all have to be investing in our ability to adapt and learn consistently around technology and its impact in our lives. Otherwise, we won't be relevant. And, and this is, a, is this very scary to many people because it is a change of behavior that we have to undergo. But it also requires a change of our education systems and, and our, the in incentives from industry groups, from the government. How we're focused today on just getting a job needs to shift. And, and there are many great organizations doing that. I think Singularity University is, is helping uh, people understand that mindset first because you can see how fast things are moving. So just to keep up is important. For us, and myself personally, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm an engineer. I like to solve problems. I don't want to personally just help people see them differently. I actually want to build things and do things differently. And so we, we, as an institution, do help get involved in ideating, prototyping, scaling, investing on real projects that we believe are aligned in taking technology to solve bigger problems that are aligned at solving what we call the global grand challenges long term. So we're, we're a bit of a blend of an education institution and uh, an accelerator and a global ecosystem that is helping connect new people and resources to problems at a bigger scale. We work on facilitating uncommon partnerships. This is a really important part of our, 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 our systems and our programs where we, we do have a goal in every program to make sure that we admit uh, and, and have a mix of startups, corporates, corporate executives, uh, government, government policymakers, nonprofits and foundation leaders, other academic institutions and thought leaders, and investors and finance leaders. Because if you get those six different constituent groups, you have everything you need to ideate, start, launch, scale new initiatives that could potentially make a big dent in the biggest of problems. Without any one of those groups, you actually miss a critical component to the whole entrepreneurial journey to solve a problem. And, and this is where we've brought our entrepreneurial Silicon Valley mindset to bear on the world's biggest problems. And, and we've seen many different incredible stories of, of local partnerships in Denmark or in Germany or in Singapore happen, these little uncommon partnerships between a startup and a, and a corporate group that then often will, will scale globally also through the Singularity community, right? Because we've got hubs similar to what we have in Germany all over the world. In fact, we have 107 chapters now around the world in almost 60 countries. And, and so that means there's, there's people thinking about technology in the future and solving bigger problems throughout the world. And so if you have a great new idea for how to analyze um, agriculture here in Germany, um, but you need manufacturing help, we can go to our manufacturing hub in China, and then we can launch it in our, in our hub in Argentina tomorrow. And that's the power of a global network with a, a shared mindset and a shared purpose of the possible positive future that we can create. One of the ways that we leverage our uncommon partnerships is making sure that we have partners who understand those problems. And so we have lots of impact partnerships with organizations like UNICEF, the World Bank, the UN World Food Program, these, the World Wildlife Fund. These are organizations who every day are understanding and working on the world's biggest problems. They have on the ground efforts to 
understand the smallest nuance of those problems and the meta scale of those issues. And when they are partnered with entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley that understand the technologies, now you have the possibility to unlock the, the new solutions that no one even imagined before. So, so that's how an uncommon partnership can, can really come, come to bear. Um, a great, I think a great example of this, of how um, the, the commercial, in, commercial and industrial capitalist side is not disconnected or disingenuous. It, it's actually just a blend uh, with the, the ph ph philanthropic approach as well. You need both. Um, I believe you can do good and do well at the same time. I, I believe using the market to do good is the most powerful way to do good. So, so how do you do that? Um, one, for us, we, we, we do try to frame the world's biggest problems as the biggest business opportunities. And we challenge our entrepreneurs and our students and our corporate partners to think about bigger and bigger problems, to look at those grand challenges and, and identify ways that they can leverage their resources or their innovation, their ideas to solve those problems. Um, our, we have what's called the 10 to the 9th plus challenge. When we have, so our GSP program, the Global Solutions Program, uh, we have a, a selection of students that we bring in from all over the world. They learn about exponential technologies. They learn about the grand challenges. They have to form teams and come up with an idea to impact a billion people within 10 years. So we have almost 70 startup companies today that have come out of that program or have come into our accelerator program. In 2011, a little startup company called Matternet came out of our GSP program. They identified that there's more than a billion people around the world who do not have consistent access to goods and services because the bridges will wash out or the road will um, wash out and, and they will never have the industrial highway system in rural Nigeria like we have in Germany, right? So how do you, how do you deal with that? And so they, they basically took the idea of, of using drones, flying drones, uh, and building a network, a hub of a network of hubs, to allow drones to move medical supplies from village to village in the most rural areas. They piloted that program in uh, the Dominican Republic, in Puerto Rico, in some refugee camps in uh, uh, I think um, Bhutan and a few other places, and they they helped solve a local problem.